Hi, my name is Brad Frieden. I'm a product marketing engineer at Keysight Technologies. This video is of a series of videos that will highlight the ways that Infinium oscilloscopes can be used in a variety of RF measurements. In this video, we're going to look at a variety of RF pulse measurements, both in time domain and frequency domain, using the S-Series 8 GHz bandwidth oscilloscope in conjunction with the 89600 VSA or Vector Signal Analyzer software. The S-Series make a good front end for these measurements. This scope has a redesigned time base, giving it very, very low close-in phase noise. It also uh, has a redesigned front end, so that the noise itself is at a very low level. And it also has amplitude and phase correction in its response across its 8 gigahertz. All of those combine to make very high quality RF measurements. Now the S series goes to 8 gigahertz. There are also other series of scopes that go up to 63 gigahertz. So depending on the application, the carrier frequency of your RF pulse uh, would determine which series you would choose. Now we're creating signals with an arbitrary waveform generator bringing those out differentially on coax to a ballon and then into channel 1 for analysis. Here we see the 89600 VSA software and it importing the signals from the oscilloscope. I made a few adjustments. For example, I picked a center frequency of 2 GHz because this RF pulse train should be chirping between 1 and 3 GHz with 2 at the center. I picked a span of 3 GHz because the signal should be about 2 GHz wide and sure enough that's what we're roughly seeing here on the screen in this window. I selected a range or scope sensitivity to optimize uh, this measurement so the signal is filling the scope screen but not clipping. And what we're able to look with markers um, at is the width of the signal in the frequency domain. So we see the 2 delta 1 marker here reading right out at 2 gigahertz like we expected. And down in the time domain, looking at the pulse with two markers, I see a delta measurement of one microsecond. So it was, I was able to see these key characteristics of the RF pulse train and validate that the signal is uh, correct. Let's now look at how we can see how the pulse changes frequency across its width as well as how the phase changes across the pulse. First thing we'll do is change our trace so that we have four grids in a 2x2. Two two. Let's look at how the frequency shifts across the pulse. Here's how I can do that. It's a linear frequency modulation that should be happening on that pulse. So I can define a measurement under the general purpose measurements called analog demod and then define it to be an FM demodulation. Then I can channel that FM demodulation into normal time and there we see a nice picture of how that frequency across the pulse is linearly changing and I've got markers reading off to me. We'll just pull this up a little bit here to see it. So it's saying one microsecond wide and I have right at around two gigahertz worth of frequency change. So that's exactly what we were hoping would be happening on this pulse train. Uh, it's working properly. Now I'm also curious about the phase of this uh, signal across the pulse. So there I can just feed in the normal channel one data into main time and I'm looking at what's called the unwrapped phase and markers are reading off for me how this phase shifts across the pulse and it's a parabola shape as I would have expected. So the VSA is very handy here to give us these key pulse parameters. We've seen how the S-Series 8 GHz bandwidth oscilloscope working together with the 89600 VSA software was able to do some RF pulse analysis to validate uh, that our pulse train was properly generated. The S-Series oscilloscope with its 
very linear amplitude and phase response as well as low phase noise and, and very uh, high precision and low noise uh, front end and time base allowed us to make those kind of RF measurements. If you'd like to learn more about um, these kind of measurements, please go to the URL on your screen and thanks for watching.